Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. In this video, let's discuss about Retrieval Augmented Generation, more commonly known as RAG or RAG. So let's first understand what is a large language model and what are the limitations and how RAG can help in solving those limitations and uh, you know help us build a better application with a large language model or a LLM. So this will be the agenda for today's video and let's get started. So we know that there are like a lot of LLMs today. So we have uh, ChatGPT by OpenAI which came first and then we have Gemini by Google and then we have Llama family of models by Meta Facebook, right? So we have Meta AI and first they have launched Llama and they, then they have launched Llama 2 with 7, 13 and 70 billion models and recently they have launched Llama 3 with uh, 8 and 80 billion and they also said that, uh, Mark Zuckerberg said that they are also training a 405 billion Llama 3 model which is like pretty huge. So basically a large language model or a LLM is a AI model and this AI model is designed to understand and generate a uh, human like text. So we have these models like chat GPT which is based on GPT 3 and GPT 4 and even Gemini Pro and these models. So they are trained on vast amount of text data and this kind of helps them to understand the patterns and relationships and, and a lot of nuances in the human language. So once these are trained, uh, we kind of can use this in order to uh, for purposes like text generation, question answering and so on. So we would have a LLM and uh, the user would give a query more commonly known as prompt and based on the data that it has been trained on so it would give a response so you can just go to a LLM and ask like let's say what is machine learning or what is deep learning so it is already trained on a vast amount of data and, and based on its training or its learning it would give you like a response saying like what machine learning is right and then there is like a bit of limitations to this LLM so let's say that uh, I mean we have this prompt and we kind of ask this question to this LLM and then it gives a response right and I've told you that this response is based on the training data on which the LLM is trained on. So what if uh, the user has asked a query or a question for which the LLM doesn't know answer. Think about this situation. So let's say that uh, you want to kind of uh, ask about a thing or let's say your company's policy or something but the LLM doesn't know this right so when there is like no source for the LLM to answer so in that cases it can definitely not answer your question right so when there is no source data or the data was not present by the time uh, the LLM was trained right so in the in those cases you won't get the answer for those queries and then there is this uh, out of date information so let's say that you are asking a question about a particular library in Python and during that time uh, let's say the library was in a different version and later like let's say the version has changed now the LLM won't have this updated information right so these are few limitations so not just for versions but for any general questions too if the information has been updated but the LLM doesn't have access to that updated information then in those cases uh, it's going to give a uh, give a response that is not accurate right and it also tends to hallucinate when it doesn't know the answer so it kind of tries to make up some answers so these are some limitations and uh, the framework called as retrieval augmented uh, generation. So this augmented memory that we are going to give the LLM is going to help us solve these issues. So that's where uh, RAG or this retrieval augmented generation comes into play. So let's say that we have a prompt and we are going to ask this prompt to the LLM and we are going to give a response. But let's say that we know that uh, LLM may not have an answer for that because it is like a more specific question. So let's say that or it can be also a situation where you have a custom document. So again, it can be like the legal document for your company or, or anything for which the LLM doesn't have access to. So let's say that you are going to ask question from this particular document. So let's say that it's an 100 page document and you don't have the time to go through it. So you're kind of using the LLM to answer it. So in those cases, uh, we know that there is this limitation in the original LLM, LLMs. So what we do is, we take this context or let's say a document in this case, we use a retriever to pass this kind of, uh, you know, information, this context to the LLM and we add like some custom instruction to this. So this construct, uh, you know, uh, custom instructions can be uh, saying the LLM that answer this question, uh, but answer from this document, don't, you know, make up the answer. So we can give these instructions. So based on these instruction, now the LLM will uh, kind of give a response. So this is uh, basically the apl application of retrieval augmented generation. So I hope everyone is clear until this point. So the main idea here is it's kind of helps the LLM or enables the LLM to answer a question 
not based on the corpus of data it has been trained on so we have this training data right so instead of uh, answering the question based on this corpus of data it's going to answer from the context that we are going to provide and for that we have this framework for this retriever and we add some you know custom instructions and so on so this is the base concept of retrieval augmented generation so if you are clear until this point now we can go ahead and, and, and discuss about the architecture of a retrieval augmented generation framework so this is like uh, the image that kind of uh, explains this in a clear way so let's say that this is the application or a chatbot that we are building and the user is kind of asking a query to it so that this is like the first step that happens so the user is asking a query but that is based on a document so this need not be a document so this can be an article uh, uh, in the internet that has the latest information so it can be that too so in this case let's consider uh, this document for simple understanding so the user is asking a query from this document so let's say that that is a legal uh, documentation and the user is user want to get a particular information out of this so now what uh, we would do is this document is split into multiple chunks the one way to do is you can copy the entire content put it in a chat gpt ask a question but if the document is long the text is long then you're not going to kind of uh, you you won't be able to ask that question right because the input text is like too long so this kind of solves that problem and, and this is better in kind of retrieving that specific information from the document so what we would do is we take the document and we kind of uh, create like multiple smaller chunks of this document so once you have that chunk, uh, an important aspect of uh, this retrieval augmented generation framework is that a embedding model. So we use a embedding model in order to convert these, uh, you know, text chunks or the document chunks into vector embeddings. So once we do that, so we save this vector embeddings into a vector DB. And what happens is we have the user query, right? So this query is also fed to the embedding model. And this is also kind of converted into vector embeddings. So you have the documents, you are chunking those document uh, pieces and, and embedding it. And also you are querying, you are also uh, converting this query into a vector embedding. So once we do that, what we are going to do is we are going to find a close match. So these are vectors, right? So we can just do a similarity search or a nearest neighbor search and find the information. Let's say that the user is asking a query and let's say we have 10 chunks and let's say the user's query, uh, we can run a similarity search and find that eight chunks. So out of, uh, let's say the document is in 10 chunks and the eight, eight chunk as the, you know, response for this query. So now we are going to feed that to the LLM. So this is how uh, this would work. So that's why we are also embedding the query. So you now you have two uh, vectors. So we have the query vector and we have like different vectors of these chunks. So we put uh, these two things in the embedding models, save that in the vector DB. And once we get this information, right? So what would happen is you store this vector embeddings of these chunks in the vector DB. And you also store the text of those uh, chunks. So let's say that you have this chunks. So the chunks are in the form of text in the first place. So you save it in one place and these are converted into vector embeddings and those are saved into vector DB. And you also have the pointers for a vector embedding to the text, right? So let's say that uh, we have a, uh, you know, chunk one and we have the chunk one text here and, and then we have this pointer that points to it. Uh, we can just take a pen and explain it to you. So we have this chunk and the text of this chunk is, is saved in a DB or somewhere. And uh, then we have a pointer, so let's call this as P1. So this pointer uh, kind of points to the vector embedding of this chunk. So let, let's call this as uh, embedding C. Okay, so let's call this E1. So similarly, you have this uh, E1, this is stored in this uh, vector DB. So similarly, all those 10 chunks are stored as E1, E2, E3 and so on. So all these vector embeddings are saved. Now uh, we have the pointers. So uh, for a text, you have a pointer that points to this embeddings. Now what we would have is, so we have this query embeddings, right? So let's call this as Q. So Q is nothing but all, we can also call this like QE, which is the embedding of the query. Now we try to find, uh, you know, the similar, uh, let's say not similar, but like what's the nearest vector for this query. So you have 10 embeddings and let's say that you are kind of doing a similarity search and find that the chunk 8 and 9 are similar to this question. So that means like that is the answer for, uh, you know, this particular query. Now, let's say we have this E8 and E9. Using the pointer, we get the text. So you start with a query and you start with a larger document 
and once you do this chunk you finally do a search uh, similarity search with these vectors and you finally end up with the actual text based on the pointers that you have now you have this text right so we can just call this as uh, you know uh, t let's say t represents the text so we have t8 and t9 which let's say the uh, which is the answer for the particular query so these are not in vector uh, embeddings uh, right now because we are using the pointer we have extracted the text now we get the queries text so let's call this as q t so it's it's the actual query so let's say that the user is asking some query uh, we pass that query as well as this text to the llm okay so now let's say uh, the user is asking like what's the legal procedure to do this particular process so we take that query and we find the you know response for not the response but the actual answer in this document and now you pass these two things to the llm but you add a context or like those custom instructions saying that answer this query based on this text don't add anything else or don't make up any answer if you don't know it and now the generator the chat gpt just do a comprehension kind of thing so it has like let's say a paragraph or a text context and it also has this query and we tell it that tell the llm or it can be a chat gpt or a gemini or anything so we tell that answer this question based on this context don't make up any answer now it would be able to answer your question so this is how uh, the framework of retrieval augmented generation works where we split the documents into different chunks embed that into a vector db and we also embed the query into uh, you know using a embedding model find do a similarity search or like your nearest neighbor search and once we have those proper chunks for which we we know that that's going to be the answer we pass that specific text so we won't pass the entire document but those specific text uh, alone to the generator and the generator would be able to answer this question so let's say now you have uh, you're going through uh, documentation of a library that has been updated recently but the model doesn't have the information for it so now it can answer your question with like this updated information so this is like a widely used uh, use case in like the industry so when we do a GMAI application right so a lot of use cases that companies are doing are like completely based on llms doing this uh you know summarization uh you know let's say there is a course uh for which they need to have this transcription and let's say we can consider this use case right so let's say that there is an udemy course and uh we are building a chatbot that can answer users question so what they can do is like get the transcription for this course once the user has asked a query we can find the response or the answer in this transcription and, and kind of uh, answer the user so this is how this basically works and again uh, in a later video let's also understand how we can do this in python so in python we can do this with uh, you know libraries like langchain llama index and so on so yeah this would be like really helpful if you're also learning gma and stuff so that's it from my side and i really hope that you are able to understand the concept of rag in terms of this llm and so on so that's it from my side and i'll see you in the next chapter thanks for watching